It's a good day. We thank God for everything that we have, every ounce of mobility, every ounce of health, every ounce of clarity in our mind. We thank God, Lord, because it's only by His grace that we are here, only by His goodness that we're able to move and do things we do. You're not so good, I'm not so good. It's God's grace. So let us put our minds on the goodness of God as we allow the music ministry to come before us and usher us into a, a praise and worship. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. If I don't mind, can y'all please stand up with us and praise God with us this morning because God has been too good for us to sit on him. So we please stand up and praise the God carry us up because we are chasing after God no matter what we do because we know we need him more and more and more. I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do because I need you. No matter what I have to do, cause I need you. 
One more time, okay? Don't let us leave the way 
way we came, dear God. Don't let us leave the way we came, dear God. Don't let us leave the way we came, dear God. And because we know it is our way to so, we're going to praise your name. We're going to glorify you. Not just now, but always in everything that we do. Lord, have your way in this place. And I pray that everybody who came thirsted to God, that you would fill them. Let their thirst be quenched this day. Let their bed is barely be filled, dear God, with your word. Open our ears to hear what you are saying. God, we're going to praise you. We're going to glorify you. We ask it all in the blessed name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the winds and waves obeyed him. The word of God is the people of God. And we all say it. Now prepare our hearts and minds for the next us to come forth. Thank you. 
shall not be weak enough to receive it. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you, through his poverty, blessed in the field. We are blessed when we come and we blessed when we go. Did you sing this song with us? Did you blessed in the city? We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold sick and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed we're blessed we're blessed we cast down for the devil is Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn around. He's gonna work in your favor. Late in the midnight, God's gonna turn. He's gonna work. How many of y'all believe that today? Oh, late. God's gonna turn. And around, and around, and around.
I'm blessed. I stand before you to recognize visitors, first time visitors to Victory AM in the church. Would you please stand? We may recognize you. Hey! hey. Jalair Stokes, pastor in Jeffersonville, Indiana, relocating to Victory AME very soon. Amen. She has a preschool and the church worships. Science, technology. I, I, I can't tell at all. She should have told it herself. <laughs> And it, it's called Maple Leaf Academy. Maple Leaf Academy. And, uh, and it, it, it has become known as one of uh, the, the prestigious uh, schools uh, in uh, southern Indiana. It is on uh, the border of uh, Indiana and Kentucky. And it's been recognized by the governor has been of both states. And uh, I know that, uh, that the uh, 4th Episcopal District and uh, the Indiana Conference will miss her greatly when she leaves there. But it goes beyond that. Uh, she also is a, a hospice, uh, a hospice uh, counselor, chaplain, and uh, she has done uh, many other great things in uh, in, in the conference and in the Fourth uh, Episcopal District. Uh, we're looking forward to having her here after I retired in Indiana. She invited me to be her uh, assistant pastor there. And I enjoyed it with her here. I have said enough. So my name is Annika Koretsky. I am new to the area. I am going to be Victory's actually new liaison with Hope. The, um, so, yeah, so I'm very excited to be here and start to get to know all of you. Um, yeah, I'm glad to be here. Places that we may not feel comfortable. 
talking about with other people, expressing what But I invite you all to create the altar wherever you are and petition God, not just for yourselves, but for those issues in our world. We are in the world, but not of it. If we got to be here, let us have ask God to help us navigate it well.
There is power 
Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain. Things that were going on seemed to frustrate and aggravate and seem that it was going to terminate his family. See, these are the things that we call the storms of life. We may have all experienced some storms in our lives. It doesn't matter the age, so it doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are, storms will come. See, they come when things seem to make no sense. These storms or problems seem so big that it make your faith look so small. Times when you feel all swamped and afraid, there you are caught up in a storm. So as we look in our Bibles at Mark, the fourth chapter, starting at the 35th verse, and please do not stand as I read, and I'm going to read from the King James Version. In the same day when the eve was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was, were some with him on other little ships. And there rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat unto the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, 
be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind in the sea obey him? The storms will come. Even if everything is going right, right now. I want you to remember to have faith in Jesus. Just because the storms will come, it will only take but a split second for everything to change, for everything to flip-flop in your life. See, maybe you too lose your job. Or maybe you know someone else that may have lost their job. Maybe you know a family member that has been in a serious accident, or you know someone else that may have had a family member in a serious accident. You know, the storms will come. Like a tornado that rips apart a house, you're filled with all personal feelings. You know, there can be storms of many facets, I can go on and on and tell you about all types of storms. But for the disciples, it wasn't a spiritual storm, but rather a physical storm. See, when they left the dock that evening, everything was going fine. And suddenly, it took a turn. The winds became horrible. The waves of the sea became big. The boat filled with water, and they thought that their life was about to be over. See, when your storms come, they come and they bring facets of emotions. They bring about fear. They bring about anger. They cause you to have some type of frustration. But most of all, they bring about uncertainty. See, storms will come in your life that you don't expect and when you least expect them. See, if you know that a storm will come, well, you have to ask yourself the very next question. How do we deal with this storm? See, the storms, they are going to come, but the first thing we need to know is that we are not to give up. See, because a storm comes does not mean that you need to throw in the towel. See, it's not time to just let it all go. See, we need to take the storm that is plaguing our life for what it is, see. It is just a trial, a test, some temptation that is going on that's trying to cause you worry. See, we must remember that we are not to give up and throw in the towel at this time. See, the next thing we need to do is to deal with this storm. See, we must keep focused. We must keep focus, and keeping focus is on the eyes, keeping our eyes on what we need to be looking forward to. See, it is when times are hard and we lose our focus. When things that are really important or tasks that we need to accomplish seem to be lost. See, isn't it that what Satan is trying to do? See, Satan is trying to trap us and entangle us up. In other words, he is trying to take your focus and putting your focus on someone else. He is filling your life with something that looked good, but something that ain't good. See, Satan is trying to turn you around, but see, he ain't just turning you around in a 160. He turned you around in a 360, so he puts you right back where you started from. See, if you're right back where you started from, you have yet to have a change. See, Satan is not wanting you to get that change. He wants you to stay trapped up. He wants you to stay entangled. He wants your focus to be lost so you focus on someone else or something else that, that, that he makes look good. We got to 
keep our focus. And finally, things we need in order to deal with our storm is that we must remember. See, we need to keep our focus and we must remember to have our faith in Jesus. See, with Jesus, we can be assured that no matter how big or how bad things may be, we can keep our focus. See, with Jesus, it doesn't matter how the storm may look or how the storm may look when it's past, we got to keep our focus on Jesus. See, when we focus on Jesus, everything turns out to be all right. See, notice, I said it turns out to be all right. It may not turn out to be how you want it to be. It may not turn out to be what you are expecting, but when you got your focus in order and you're focused on Jesus, everything is going to turn all right. Now, one thing that is particular about a storm is that a storm will go. In other words, I'm trying to tell you is, see, I don't know about you, but see, in my 52 years of life, I've never been a storm that has lasted forever. See, in my 52 years of life, I've been through some hurricanes, and then the hurricanes, it may seem like it's going to last forever. There have been hurricanes where we had to been cocked up in some auditorium with millions or thousands of people that you just didn't know. But that storm didn't last forever. It may look very weary on the outside and very despised on the outside. It looked like it was just going to take everything and tear everything up. But you still came through. The sun comes out. The rain stops. And before you know it, that storm is over. We can always take hope in the fact that no matter how bad things are, this too shall pass. See, just as the disciples saw the same thing, they thought that the storm they were in was the last of them. They thought that they were, their life was going to end right there. But what do we do when we see the storms coming in our lives? See, it isn't passing away. It isn't going anywhere. See, this is your mind talking to you. See, this is the way the devil wants to fool you. See, he gives you all this, all this glorified stuff. And he, 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 matter of fact, he put all this bad in front of you. He makes it look all bad. And then he turns around and he gives you something that you think is good. But see, when our storms, begin to rage. See, we, I don't know about y'all, but I know I have done it before. See, we call mom. We call our daddies. We look to our brothers and our sisters. But see, when the storms rage, um, we got to learn first to look at Jesus. See, we got to call on Jesus first. And if you're calling on anybody else, that storm may go on and go on and go on. But when you have Jesus and you put Jesus first and you live on faith, that storm too shall pass. You got to know who to talk to first. It's okay to talk to mama and them. But before you talk to mama and them, you need to call on Jesus. You want that storm to pass. You want this storm to be over. You want that change. Uh, you want this new direction. Uh, you want this bank account to look better. You need to talk to Jesus first. And one thing about Jesus. See, what, what happens sometimes is we lose a little focus again. See, we, we, we don't came through the storm. Jesus done brought us through, but now we done lost focus once again. See, like I told you, see, we got to remain focused. Because, see, because we got through the storm, now we think it's all all right. And then we forget that Jesus brought us through. And now we leave Jesus back here until we get to another storm. See, but see, Jesus don't want to just be with you in your bad. See, Jesus came to be with you in your good times. See, in your good times as well as your bad times, you need to carry Jesus with you wherever you go. Matter of fact, right now, this, this, I can recall, it just, I don't know where it came from, but there's a poem 
every time we went to my grandma's house, as soon as you opened the door, there was the, 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 the poem up there. And it was called Footprints. See, Footprints. See, we don't have those things in our houses no more. Matter of fact, if you're probably 18, probably the 30, you ain't never even probably seen Footprints. But let me tell you about Footprints. See, I ain't gonna tell you about this whole, the whole thing. But I just want to remind you that Jesus always remains, remains by your side. See, those that know about footprints, they may think the best thing about footprints is that when the man in the poem, he got tired, it says, this is when Jesus says, I am carrying you. See, but that ain't, that ain't, that ain't it. That's, that's, that is wonderful because Jesus is carrying you so when we get tired, we know that we have our God, that we have Jesus that is going to lift us up when we get weak. He's going to carry us when we get weary. But there is something about this poem that touches me even more. So as the man is walking, he noticed there is extra footprints with him. See, these footprints, these footprints are very important. Because these footprints is your Jesus that is walking by your side. See, these footprints is the direction that Jesus is providing you. See, it's because of the footprints that we are to be able to remain. And Jesus remains in our life. It's these footprints that keeps us focused. It's these footprints that provides the direction. So you have to remember to remain focused and know that Jesus is with you all the way. He's with you in your bad. He's with you in your good. Now, I'm, 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 I don't know what I'm, I'm about to finish, but in verse 41, I'm going to read again, and it says, and they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea Obey him. What manner of man is this? See, I'm glad they asked this question because, see, I stopped by to tell you the manner of this man. See, this manner of this man is the man that when you sick, he has the solution to heal you. See, when you are lost, he helps to find you. See, when you are sinking very low, this manner of man reaches down and pulls you up. See, this is the manner of man that you should be carrying with you all through your life every step that you go through and everything and all things you do carry this manner of man. See, who is this who said to have power to turn water into wine? Power to calm the sea during a storm and bring back the dead to life again. Who is this who is said to walk like a man but speaks like a god? See, who is this? Who is this who is said to have died but rose from the dead on the third day? Come on now, y'all. Who is this who is said to be the savior of the world? See, he is our solution for all our sins. See, he is our salvation. He is our eternal life. Who is this manner of man? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming through the Father but by me. See, the only way to heaven is through Christ. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection in the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. So who is this manner of man? This manner of man is the man that we all should be calling on. His name is Jesus. And because of Jesus, it is the reason that you and I, we all live today. It is because of Jesus that we are able to walk and talk. Uh, it is because of Jesus that we have sight in our eyes. Uh, it is because of Jesus that we are able to come here and worship in his name. What manner of man is this? The manner of man that you should call on whenever you find yourself in any kind of storm. Amen.
follow the building. What manner of man is this? What the one tells you? Well, even the winds and the waves obey him. Well, we got to reflect back on 35 as well. He said, oh, he a little faith because he told them, come let us go to the other side. Yeah, yeah. When God says it, it is so. Yeah. I don't care what storm you see. If God said, let us go to the other side, that means you're going to get there. You may have some hardships along the way, but you're going to get there. You may lose some friends away, but you're going to get there. You may have some struggles, but you're going to get there. They're not taking for granted that we all know this man. So if by chance you don't know the man who calms the wind and the waves, we extend the invitation to you today to get to know him. If you know the man but you've fallen out of relationship with him, you, you feel like you're so far that he can't reach you. Let me remind you that that's a lie the pits of hell. We can never go so far that God can't reach us. So we invite you to come be reconnected with God if that's your desire. Maybe you are looking for a church home. You are in right relationship. You know who God is. You just want a place to work out your soul's salvation. We would love to have you. Victory could be that place for you. Even if you're here for a short while and you want to be under our watch care, you are invited to join with us at Victory AME. If there be none, let us give God another hand clap of praise for that mighty word. You may be seated as the ushers come.
say thank you. Amen. Yeah. 
to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior to be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever and we all sing 